So I wanna talk about the pentose phosphate pathway. And this is a slide that's more of an overview slide, and we didn't really get into too many weeds with this, but I wanna take this overview slide as a way to sort of highlight some of the important pieces that we talked about with the pentose phosphate pathway. Okay, so the first thing, NADPH. That is one of the important molecules that is made in the pentose phosphate pathway. It kind of looks like it's NADH, and if you look at the structures of it, they're identical with the exception of an OH group that uh, happens to be phosphorylated or not. But it is really important to highlight that these molecules are not interconvertible by phosphorylation. We don't have a kinase that interconverts NADH and NADPH, and they serve wildly different sort of functions biochemically. But um, we do make NADPH in the pentose phosphate pathway. So big picture, two things I want you to know is the two main molecules that are made in the pentose phosphate pathway are NADPH, and then we make uh, R5P, which is ribose 5-phosphate, which is used for nucleotide synthesis. So these guys are the main money molecules. Let's go ahead and highlight that NADPH and then ribose 5-phosphate are the main money molecules that we're going to use in uh, our pentose phosphate pathway synthesis process. Okay, uh, other things to kind of comment. Three stages in the pentose phosphate pathway. Okay, so stage one, stage one, okay, is gonna be this first sort of stage. Okay, we're gonna be generating CO2. We're going to be uh, generating the NADPH there, and we're generating something called ribulose 5-phosphate, RU5P. And what we do with that is ultimately determined by whether we need to make nucleotides or not. So that's stage one. We make NADPH, which is again that important money molecule, and then we've got a 5-carbon ribulose 5-phosphate. It has five carbons. We siphoned G6P off of glycolysis. Remember we talked about G6P being a really important in and out point of glycolysis? So we can siphon G6P off of glycolysis, snip a CO2 off, and then we do what's called oxidative decarboxylation. And so we get rid of uh, carbon as CO2, and then we make NADPH. And that is the important sort of money molecule that we have there. So that is stage one. Stage two, okay, this is also where we're going to synthesize the money molecule ribose 5-phosphate. So what we do is we take the 5-carbon ribulose 5-phosphate, and we do some rearranging, okay? We make it into um, other five carbon sugars. If we make it primarily into ribose 5-phosphate, if we primarily go down this pathway, that can allow us to siphon off ribose 5-phosphate to make nucleotides. But what often happens is we, we're going to call stage, five, or stage two a restructuring phase, where we're basically going to be making a different sort of mixture of five carbon pieces so that we can, in our next stage, recycle them back into a glycolytic intermediate. Okay, so some numbers I want to put on here that I do want you to know that if we are going to be doing our recycling, we want to have these in a two to one ratio. So that's an important piece to know. That's going to be the ideal sort of situation to recycle these molecules. Okay, stage three here. So stage three is going to be where we take these molecules. Okay, and again, if they're in that right ratio, we are going to be able to regenerate them into uh, glycolytic intermediates, F6P, and then GAP, so six carbon and three carbon pieces that can allow them to return as partially oxidized fuels to glycolysis so that we can recoup that energy. We haven't lost that energy. We just sort of use them for a little bit to make our money molecules, again, NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. Okay, and then we can return the rest of those carbon atoms as fuel, as uh, glycolytic intermediates. So a couple of other things to highlight here. An enzyme that we talked about that I do want you to know is we've got G6PD. That is the rate controlling enzyme for the pentose phosphate pathway. That is the enzyme that's responsible for doing step one and essentially doing this initial 
um, sort of chemistry here. Uh, we don't need to remember exactly where it's in in that pathway, but I do want you to remember it is the rate controlling enzyme. But we did talk about the importance of that enzyme in that that is the most prevalent metabolic sort of enzyme deficiency globally. Okay, and we talked about too how two things that we use NADPH for our lipid biosynthesis, so let's even add this on here. We use NADPH for lipid biosynthesis. Really important if you are going to be um, making new cells, undergoing uh, cell growth and things like that, so lipid biosynthesis. And then glutathione regeneration. So glutathione regeneration. So remember, glutathione is your body's natural antioxidant, and it sacrifices itself by disulfide linking to another glutathione molecule to neutralize any oxidizing species. But in order to regenerate glutathione and get it back into its thiol form, we need to have something that can do that biochemistry, and NADPH is what's necessary for that. So we went through and sort of discussed how somebody who is G6PD deficient is going to be NADPH deficient, which means they're more susceptible to oxidative damage, okay? And if that happens in your red blood cells, that means you are more likely to suffer um, uh, uh, lysis for your red blood cells. So those individuals tend to have hemolytic anemia as kind of one of their main sort of symptoms of that disease. Okay, last thing to sort of mention here is looking at whether or not these arrows are one way or reversible. Stage one is completely irreversible, okay? We often see that with um, reactions that liberate carbon dioxide. We tend not to be able to run those in reverse using that same enzyme, okay? So this is an irreversible process. We have to go through that pathway if we want to make our NADPH, okay? But if we want to make ribose 5-phosphate, we don't have to go through stage one and then the restructuring in stage two. What we actually can do is we can siphon up these glycolytic intermediates, F6P and GAP, from glycolysis, and we can do that. We can reverse the recycling sort of stage, and then we can make the R5P that we need for nucleotide synthesis. So... We had several detailed slides that we uh, talked about with regards to the pentose phosphate pathway, but this slide is a nice simple slide um, that kind of gives us an overview and allowed us to talk about some of the details that I do want you to know for the pentose phosphate pathway.